Hello, this video is going to explain the concept of quality of life and this will be applied to um, many parts of the global development specification so it's a really important um, concept to get right now and then you'll be able to apply it to um, our case study of India and when you'll get when you're given other unfamiliar case studies in the exam. So to sort of start off, let's make sure we can define it um, in simple terms. So quality of life is the extent to which a person feels psychologically and physically well. So this idea that someone is happy, is content, has a feeling of well-being. So well-being is often measured by asking individuals or groups in a community what their lives are like. So it's very hard to, um, to measure quality of life without asking people, what is it that, you're, that you value? What is it that, you, uh, that makes you feel like your life is, is good? Um, so it's a more subjective way of looking at development. However, we can measure it um, by looking at, at all these different factors that we see um, in the specification um, point that you can see on the screen. Um, so let's have a, have a sort of recap of what we learned in the last video. So what factors um, affect quality of life? I'd like you to try and come up with six. Um, these will be different categories of uh, different types of development we've looked at. But if you think back to that factors video um, where we looked at Belgium and the DRC, this um, is a good place to start. So pause the video for a couple of minutes, write down as many as you can think of, and then let's um, have a look at your answers. So let's start off with, um, with the kind of first well, from, from what comes to my mind when we first think of quality of life is, is access to, ha to housing um, affordable? Is it safe housing? Is it clean housing? Where is it located within the city? Can people travel um, to work easily without having to pay a lot of money or to spend a lot of time doing that? Um, this is a really big, big part of defining people's and, and um, uh, leading to people's feeling of quality of life. Um, healthcare obviously access to this and being able to seek help from a doctor when you are when you are sick is really important because this might turn into maybe a long-term illness or a more serious illness if you um, are unable to see a doctor and this has a huge impact on people's quality of life education if you are if you have options created by education and you're able to change your job if you're not enjoying it you're able to change your sort of circumstances based on the jobs that you're that you have um then this is a massive factor in in defining you know and people people's quality of life for the future and education also when you're in education this can give people a feeling of um you know the inclusion that they are able to participate in life um, because they are being given this this ability to access information through education Employment links closely to what we just discussed with education and you could think about working conditions and workers' rights. Technology, so if people have even something as, as simple that we kind of take for granted in this country, having mains electricity, can you actually put your lights on and boil a kettle and, um, and be able to keep your, your food um, safe in a fridge, for example. This is not the reality for many people in developing countries. They do not have mains electricity. You might even put internet access and having a mobile phone in that category as well. And then finally, water and food security. So if you are able to afford um, food, and again, uh, uh, safe food and, and regular sort of consistent supply of food and if water is, is clean and, and won't cause you illness like cholera or dysentery especially if you're a child this is a really big issue um, so we're going to continue to um, compare two countries and, and focus again on, on Belgium a European country um, and the DRC the Democratic Republic of Congo which is in Central Africa I um, actually think I need to move that little circle over a little bit it's not quite on the right the right marker but yeah two incredibly different countries based on their on the statistics where we how we measure development so all of these statistics um excluding gni using hdi um are economic and social measures of um of development so you can see a drc is incredibly um uh, poor country and has suffered from civil war and political unrest and still really struggles to develop economically because of this um, and people's access to education again very very limited in many rural parts of the country 
So we're going to consider a, a personal story because this is the, the kind of best way to try and think about quality of life. Of what, what is it that has held back and created barriers for a child like Mary Paul? And this story is a true story taken from the NGO at UNICEF. Um, this is an international NGO, which means they work all over the world. And NGOs are really important. We'll consider them in the next, um, the next lesson because they often um, provide services that governments don't um, aren't able to provide and they they create a voice for people um, who would often not be able to access the sort of resources that they need to be able to live live a good quality of life so Kinshasa is the um, Kinshasa sorry is the capital of the DRC um, and I just want you to have a look at some photos of this city it looks very different to a city like London where you might be based at the moment um, and I want you to try and think of what evidence we can see in these photos, evidence to suggest that quality of life is not the same as a city like London. So have a little pause to think. OK, so we can see in these images that there are slum houses and you can tell they're slum houses based on the kind of informal materials that they're using. You can see rusted um, rusted corrugated iron sheets on top of the homes and they're very very close together very densely packed and, and you can see from this photo there's high-rise buildings so you might be asked in a suggest question suggest one factor that affects people's quality of life in this location and you would say for a suggest question i can see so i can see in the images that there is slum housing this means that people are unable to access um, clean water and and safe sanitation to be able to live um, a healthy life so you're trying to take evidence from the images you're given so we're obviously in making it uh, when we're inferring this we don't know exactly what kind of how like who lives in these houses but we can see that they are different to the high-rise buildings in the background okay okay let's move on to Mary Paul's story so Think about the factors um, that we discussed in the in the first recap and what factors are limiting um, and sort of stopping Mary Paul's quality of life from improving. So what barriers does Mary Paul have to improving her quality of life um, now and in the future? OK, Mary Paul is in her first year of secondary school. However, at 14, children her age are usually in their second or even third year of study. She must work hard if she wants to achieve her goal of becoming a doctor. The last eight years have been difficult. Her life changed after her father died of HIV, leaving both her and her older sister to provide for themselves. They were forced to beg on the streets, along with 25,000 other children in Kinshasa. The local church was able to provide them with food and shelter for a while until the girls were forced to another slum by a street gang operating in the area. Subsequently, Mary Paul became undernourished, meaning she became very ill when suffering from common illnesses such as a cold or chest infection. At age 12, Mary Paul was offered a place at a girls' boarding school outside Kinshasa. The building had electricity, running water and sports fields. This gave Mary Paul hope for the future and allowed her to dream about a better life for her and others in living in her country. So think about the factors that Mary Paul um, has been affected by. What has, has led to Mary Paul not being able to um, access a good quality of life and have a good quality of life now and in the future pause the video take some more notes see if you can remember more than you did at the start of the lesson so affordable access to housing Mary Paul was forced to live in a slum um, after her father passed away and actually had to move between slums and I, and I we assume she had to live in quite poor conditions as a result and as she was still studying she wasn't working her and her sister it probably um, was very hard to access safe and affordable housing um, Mary Paul um, became very undernourished because of this lack of access to sort of um, regular um, uh, and safe and nutritious food and as a result she got sick more regularly so this would have affected her study at school and um, she probably wouldn't have had easy access to a doctor anyway. Education so it took it took until the age of 12 for Mary Paul to be given an opportunity to study um, at a good school and a school that would offer her opportunities so this would obviously affect her 
her quality of life in the future and as you could remember from the if you remember from the story this gave her hope aspiration this is a huge part of quality of life and it can do you feel like you're you're not trapped in the situation that you are you find yourself in work work and um personal life wise um employment so she is seeking to be a doctor and you hope that this this is something that, that she'll be able to achieve with with hard work and and a good education at the boarding school she she went to um technology so um the church that offered her food and and, and shelter um you kind of think about maybe did they have um electricity in that sort of church building was it quite um primitive like in terms of what they could offer them in terms of bedding and and these kind of things so you yeah something to bear in mind and then water and food security she was unable to access affordable food and clean water on a regular basis and this and this led to, to her being undernourished okay so this is another exam question check-in these are these quite these questions and i'm just going to quickly change the map marks for this um these questions are they, they always come up in in this part of the paper and it's really important that you understand the um the structure of this okay so always make sure that you have a clear point and there then followed by an, an explanation so each of these um parts of the answer so it says to explain two ways you'd need two main points and then both of these explained clearly the point needs to directly answer the question so let's look at the first model answer if you'd like to pause the video and answer this um already like without having any um, modeling then please do if not um, maybe pause it after this this first model and then try and write the second um second point mm -hmm. so access to safe and affordable housing is often more difficult for people in developing countries so we the question asks about uneven development and therefore you'd have to interpret the question as what factors have led to people's quality of life being affected um, by uneven development so this the idea that you've got to kind of in, interpret the question and break it down um, whenever you see this term uneven development think about what factors have led to this being the case what has created poorer and richer countries or poorer people within a country um, so that's our main point, access to affordable, affordable housing. The explanation, always using this sentence starter if you're stuck. This means that they may have to live in slum housing that has poor sanitary conditions. Okay, pause the video um, to answer the next main point, um, and then I will show you the answer. So you could mention that food security may also be an issue in some um, some of these developing countries. This means that people may become undernourished because they cannot afford higher food prices. So this is a good example of where you could use many different points. You could basically use any of the main of the factors, these factors, um, to then explain why uh, people's quality of life have been affected. Okay. I hope you found this video helpful and um, and informative and I look forward to um, to you joining me for another lesson on types of aid aid strategies um, in the next uh, the next one okay thanks very much and see you soon